The City of Manchester is a global hotspot for research in the sciences, contributing countless researchers and scientific breakthroughs. One such scientist is the infamous James Lovelock. Born in Hertfordshire in 1919, he was frequently seen as a maverick throughout his childhood and adult life. He dealt badly with authority at his London school and was reported to have refused to test on rabbits during his World War II research, instead looking at skin burns by experimenting on himself. After school, he spent two years in paid work and raised the money so that he could fund his own education, studying chemistry at the University of Manchester. Upon the completion of his chemistry degree, Lovelock's career varied massively and included stints working on a Quaker farm, studying a PhD at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and eventually working for NASA, as he worked on developing sensitive analytical instruments in the hope of detecting extraterrestrial life, it was here that Lovelock proposed the Gaia Hypothesis. The Gaia Hypothesis, otherwise known as the Gaia Principle or Theory, was proposed as a new way of understanding our relationship with the planet Earth. Lovelock described the Earth as a being in and of itself, which interacts with each individual organism. We already know that changes in non-living things, like the soil, water or temperature, can cause changes in living organisms. This is called natural selection. But Lovelock suggested that this was a cyclical process. So both the living and non-living components change simultaneously, so that life maintains the conditions suitable for its own survival. The idea was first developed when Lovelock was working for NASA. He was looking at the elements present in the atmosphere of different planets and compared that to what was found on Earth. Oddly enough, while the atmosphere on Earth was the only one proven to actually allow life, it was also the one that made the least chemical sense. In fact, the balance of elements was so out of whack that it was even close to being explosive. So, it seems that the atmosphere on Earth is best suited for life to be sustained, and in turn, the living organisms on Earth maintain that atmosphere. Recently, we've also been given evidence for the Gaia hypothesis in clouds. Organic vapours necessary for cloud formation are generated by bacteria, trees and livestock. And in turn, the clouds maintain the temperature of the Earth so that it's best suited for these organisms to survive. So, the Gaia hypothesis offers insight into climate change, energy, health and agriculture. However, many scientists have made large criticisms of the theory, and in particular focusing on situations where living organisms have a negative effect on our planet. If the Gaia hypothesis suggests that the living and non-living grow together in synchrony, it doesn't fit with the negative effects we have on our surroundings. In fact, Lovelock even suggests that climate change is not our fault, and instead just a result of our simultaneous evolution. Despite all of these criticisms, the Gaia hypothesis still remains in discussion up to 40 years later, and many researchers continue to consider it as a possible option. And in modern days, similar ideologies form the basis of Earth system science.